keep the Islamic character at all times. For brothers um, and sisters, follow the Islamic dress code at all times. At all times. Now, brothers are like, you know, some brothers are like, dress code? We have dress code? Yes, we have dress code. Brothers have a dress code. And they, their dress code is exactly the same as the sister's dress code. Exactly the same. Just tinted a little bit. For a woman, her dress code is that she must guard her honesty and cover her auto from everyone unless, uh, except for the people Allah gave her permission to reveal it to. And her Ottawa is all of her beautification. Everything that is considered her beautification, she covers it. And it must be covered um, to the point to where it is not visible. Her clothing cannot be see-through, cannot see the shape, you should not be able to see the shape of her body. Uh, it must not be tight, revealing the shape of her body. You must not be able to see the color of her skin. And it must not be something that is vainglorious and you know attracting you know too much unwanted and unwanted attention to herself. For brothers, the same thing. You must guard and protect your arwa, which is between your navel and your knees, and it must be loose. That means you should not be wearing pants that are tight enough for me to count the coins in your pocket. I don't want you bending over in front of me like that, brother. You know, realistically, and there are some brothers who do that. They'll come to the masjid with pants on so tight that I know if I'm standing behind you in Salah, when you bend over in sujood, I don't want to see all that. Seriously, and it's not permissible actually. According to the majority of scholars, it's not permissible. You are showing off your own. And so it must be loose, it cannot be see-through, etc. The same rules go for you. It's just a little bit different than the areas that have to be covered. Um, for the sisters, this uh, keeping the Islamic character of um, the separation between men and women, you know, even if you're giving dawah, uh, you know, giving dawah to a male is not impermissible, but it, there is a fine line. There's a fine line for how far you should take. Um, in reality, to avoid yourself any fitna, you know, you should take the conversation only as far as it needs to go to take them to a brother who can help them from that point. Not to mean you don't run away from them. You know, I can't talk to you. No, you need to introduce, you know, Islam to them, but to the capacity where you can introduce them to a brother. Brothers, the same with women. Don't be all in a sister in a woman's face saying you're giving down. There's only so much you can do. You do it to the extent where you can take them to a sister. That's just better. It's just, it's just better. I'm not saying it has to be done that way. It's just, it's just better for you and for that person. Because this happens too much. Oh, I'm giving dawah to this guy and now they fall in love and he wants to accept the sin. Not because of the sin, because of her. Or the girl for him. How long is that going to work out? As long as the relationship lasts. Relationship gone, the person's Islam is gone with it. So that's, that's not good. I don't need to go down that route. So I need to try to keep that in, in accordance. Um, and, and, and for brothers and sisters, you dress appropriately, meaning that you are clean. You are presentable. A Muslim should not be dirty. Even though the Prophet them had the most poor of clothes. I mean, he wore the most humble of clothing. If you go and see some of them over in, in, in Istanbul, some of the, you know, the clothing they had from the Prophet and, and the Sahaba, they have some of their clothing. They were very, very humble clothing, but they were not dirty. You will never see the Prophet ﷺ a description of him being dirty. He was always clean. He was always smelling good. He was always, you know, dressing handsomely, even though it was of meat clothing. I mean, this was just how it was. They are presentable. Um, that, that's so on and so forth. And brothers, I'm not even going to go into the issue of the yet. You should have a video. This is just clear cut in the sunnah that the Prophet ﷺ is coming from him. Um, so, is, that's a whole other issue. I don't want to go down there. I don't have time. But be presentable and look like a Muslim. Number five, have honorable sources of income. Honorable sources of income. Halal money. Do not, do not take haram money that you know is not permissible and try to put that towards doubt. You're already starting off on a bad foot. Just like you can't take riba 
and you know, and and and, and, and go and try to you know, build a master. There are people that do, unfortunately, but you're not going to see about a cut. You're not going to see about a cut. And this is one thing that I have always asked, um, and I've asked this for a long time, for Allah to not ever give me any money. Don't give me any money that doesn't have your back. Do not give me any money that does not have your back. And do not give me any people to help me. I don't want anyone to help me if you don't love them. I don't want anyone to help me if you don't love them. That's it. No money without barakah, no people without Allah's love attached to them. Um, so you need to have honorable sources of income. And that means you need to have a halal source of income. That's guaranteed as a Muslim, though, especially when I put it toward da'wah, don't, don't, don't play with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. You don't want to make it any more. Number six. You should be willing to help others and ask for help. Ta'wan wa tawassul. You need to be willing to ask for help. And you need to be willing to help. So if somebody needs your help, you need to be willing to help. Help one another. Allah commands us help one another with anbir wa taqwa. With piety and taqwa. And do not help one another in, in, in sin and transgression. You need to be willing to help. You know, that's a big problem, you know, when, when, when everybody needs help, you know, it's, it's like, it's really hard. You know, if, if they're having a, uh, if the, if the, if the if you guys call it MSAs, and you can, as well, you guys will call it MSAs, ISA, right? It's a the state they call it MSAs, Muslim Student Association. But let's say the ISOP is having a pizza party or a big gathering and they're giving away pizza prizes. Everybody's there. Everybody's there. The moment they say we need some help, this everybody's gone. So what happens? So we need to be willing to help others. And we also need to be willing to know when we need help. We can't have this arrogance, you know, that you know, I can do it and I don't need help. And no. You need to be willing. I, I'll be the first to tell you if I need some help, I'm gonna tell somebody you need help. And you need to have that capacity to know when to ask for help. Um, first, we seek help with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then we seek the help from the reality and the creation. Um, what, what is in within the, what's, what's within the capacity of the creation to help us? We ask for their help. And when we look at the universe, 
the laws of the universe, we usually find this same pattern. That they, there is usually one fine, defined law that, that causes this to happen. And there's usually not a counter contradictory law unless you start getting to the theory of other dimensions and I mean, that's, you're going into theoretical physics. <laughs> Not applied physics. When it comes to applied physics, there is universal laws. Uh, this shows that this must be a design. Because if there were two people designing all the universal laws, then at some point there's going to come some contradiction, or there's going to come some overlap, or there's going to come some, some things that don't mix. Yes or no? If there's two independent minds creating all of these universal laws of applied physics, you're going to find some things that just don't work. There's going to be some things that, okay, this is not, this is not going to work together. But the more we study applied physics, the more we realize that there is a set pattern for everything. There's a set standard for most things within, within the universe. And, and they don't find two contradictory things. Even though you do have some atheists who try to stretch physics to, the, you know, to, to ridiculous theoretical purposes to try to prove that there are contradictions within the universal law, so they can prove that there is no God, which they are just reaching for straws. Reaching for straws. When we see the reality of proven, proven applied physics, they follow universal patterns. And this alludes us to the theory that it was one design. Cannot be more than one designer to this. Cannot be more than one designer to this, unless you want to come up now with the, the conspiracy that the designers work together. Maybe if you're Christian. <laughs> It might, it might work, it might fit into the whole Trinity thing, but it, it's, it's, when it comes to, the, uh, when it comes to uh, proven applied physics, then we see that there are universal laws. I mean, that's the universal law of, of gravity. If I do this, that happens. I mean, it's not going to change. No matter where you go in, in the universe, I mean, gravity is gravity. Even though it may have strength here, there, whatever, I mean, it's gravity. It all, it all has the same applied physics. Uh, so you have some arguments for Chaldee. Number two, you should be aware of the major religion concepts and isms. Did I say you should be a scholar of the major concepts and isms? No. Don't do that. Don't waste your time. You should just be aware. You should be aware uh, of them. Um, I wouldn't waste your time. People are like, oh, I want to go study Christianity. Why? Why? Don't do that. Leave that to the people who came out of that life. They already have that by default. Maybe get some things from them that you can use and that's it. You know, you, why do you want to try to become like them? Now you want to spend 10 years studying Christianity so you can go argue with four or five Christians? I mean, are you really that stupid? <laughs> I mean, are you really that ignorant? Why don't you go spend that same 10 years learning Islam? Then you have the best of the having proofs that you can relate to anyone that can't be questioned. Then rather than going and confusing yourself with Christianity. Let the people who are already doing that do that. And if you meet someone that you need that evidence for, then just refer them to that person or his website or his information. That's enough. Don't waste your time. But you should be aware so that you know what the goal is and what to direct them to and what not to direct them to, etc. Just be aware of the major concepts, religions, and isms. Don't underestimate or overestimate to whom you're calling. And I talked about this earlier. Don't underestimate who you're talking to. You might be talking to someone that really knows a lot about Islam, that really knows a lot about Christianity, and they don't seem like they really knows a lot about applied physics or theoretical physics, and you go trying to go through these concepts of physics with them, and you're talking to the physics professor, and he just blasts you and starts running you with terminology you can't even boggle your mind around. Um, so just be aware. Be aware of whom it is you're talking to. Don't underestimate them, and don't overestimate them. What do I mean, don't overestimate them? Don't overestimate them. Don't make them feel good about their goal. Don't make them feel good about their disbelief. Don't reassure their beliefs. Don't make them feel good about themselves when you know that their beliefs are incorrect. Uh, I mean, we do that too much with Christianity. We overestimate them and overpraise them. Oh, you guys, we are the same. We believe in the same God, and we have so many commonalities. And and then that's where you leave it. That's where we leave it. What? <laughs> yes, we do have a lot of commonalities with Christianity. Tons of them. 
But the, and we only have a very few differences, but those differences are so major that